Good morning, and welcome to Emmanuel High Church. I'm so happy you've joined us in spirit from wherever you are for a time of worship today. Today is Sunday, January 10th, Baptism of Christ Sunday. I'd like to give a special welcome to anyone who might be joining us for the first time this morning, and a thank you to Holly Petter for being our liturgist. Today, we will be reaffirming our baptism later in the service, so you might grab a cup of water along with your Bible and candle if you haven't already done so. A reminder that Consistory is meeting on Tuesday evening on our regular Zoom connection. Um, also, our annual meeting will be directly after church on Sunday, the 31st, the last Sunday of January. So please get any reports that you might have to May for the annual report by this Tuesday. Our scripture readings this morning come from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. And our gospel lesson is from the gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Our hymns are Come Holy Spirit, and they'll know we are Christians. And now just a reminder that your microphones are muted to cut down on confusion, but we still encourage you to use your voice to participate throughout our gathering this morning. And um, to find your chat box by uh, clicking on your screen and finding the chat box and opening it, and that's where you type any prayer requests that you might have. Now let us move into our time of worship, shall we? Each week, we prepare ourselves for worship by reminding our minds and our bodies that even though we're still physically in our homes, that we're now gathering as the body of Christ and entering onto holy ground. And we do this by placing our right hand on our hearts and our left hand on our bellies. And then we breathe in to the count of four. And out to the count of more than four. Once again, we breathe in God's love and light. And we breathe out any stress or anxiety we might feel. And one final breath in to fill ourselves with God's radiance and stream of love. And a final breath out, releasing any leftover worry or tension hidden in any of the corners of our soul. And we remember that no matter where we are, that God is with us right now, ever drawing us to the place where Christ dwells eternally. If you have a candle, now's the moment to take it and light it as I light our candles here on the altar. Let's pray, shall we? Loving creator, we come to you this morning seeking to step in to your stream of water of life. As we gather this day, O oh Lord, though physically scattered, we are united in spirit. Renew us, we pray. Send your streams of living water to quench us through your coming words. This we pray in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Let us now join together in singing our introit, Sweet, Sweet Spirit.
please join me in the call to worship? Baptized to begin lives of faith. We would, bat, we would witness to all you do, you do in our committees, in our midst, in our world. Baptized to serve. We would speak up for the voiceless. We would bring justice to those who have none. Baptized to speak. We would heal and not hurt. We would bless and not curse. Baptized to do what is right. We would not play favorites, but treat each other <clears throat> as your beloved. join me in the prayer of confession. God, you tell us that we are your beloved children, but there is a part of us that wonders if we are worthy of such a designation. You call us by our names. You claim us as your own, and we wonder if there is another shoe about to drop, some payback that will be required. You challenge us to not be afraid, for you are with us in triumph and tragedy. And yet there are times when we are sure you have forgotten, when we are afraid, when we are unsure how to live as your beloved. Forgive us and bring us back to unswerving trust in you. Amen.
God speaks to the prophet Isaiah saying to the nation and to us, you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you. God's living water flows through life, sustaining and emboldening, emboldening us. Alleluia and amen. Each year on this particular Sunday, we celebrate the baptism of Christ by renewing our own baptisms. We once again agree to step into God's eternal water of life. The same water that Jesus offered to the woman at the well so she would not thirst again. Let's learn about what the Bible teaches us about the water of life. If you go out into a desert, you'll see why it's one of the most deadly, uninhabitable places on the planet. It's dry, and where there's no water, there's no life. This is the picture that we get on page two of Genesis. The story begins with a dry and desolate wilderness, but God provides a spring in the desert that becomes a source of life for plants and animals. And that's where God brings together a man and a woman so that humanity can flourish and spread the life of the garden. Exactly. And that garden spring becomes a river that flows out to water the entire world. And there can be enough for everyone. It's all a gift from God. And this is great. Humans in a lush garden. But as it turns out, they find a way to ruin it. Right. Despite all of this water that God's provided, it's like they still have a drought deep inside of them. This is an image of the human condition, how we're always thirsty for more. But more of what? Well, in this story, the humans want more wisdom to create more security and more control on their own terms. And tragically, it only leaves them more thirsty and suspicious of each other. And so they end up back in the wilderness. The humans have lost access to the water of life. And because of that, they can't spread God's life into the world. And so God needs to rescue them from the wilderness. Yeah, like in the story of Jacob, his selfish scheming ruined his family relationships. So he has to run from his problems out into the wilderness. But there he finds a well and he meets a woman. And this is like Eden, a man and a woman together by a source of water. Right. And then through Jacob, God creates the family of Israel and he invites them to share in his own life so that they can be his partners in spreading that life to others. And sometimes they do this. But ultimately, they struggle with the same drought of the soul, thirsting for more power and more control, and it leads them down a path of violence and self-ruin. And so they find themselves in a new wilderness, captive to other nations. All this effort to quench our own thirst on our own terms, it's killing us. Yeah, the biblical prophet Ezekiel described Israel in exile as a pile of dry bones scattered in a desert valley. But he said, one day God will pour out his own life presence, his spirit to water the land, to create a new Eden, and new kinds of humans. People who can spread God's life to others. Exactly. And so this brings us to the story of Jesus. Right. And there's a story about Jesus who goes to a well that Jacob used to own. And just like in Jacob's story, Jesus meets a woman. And he tells this woman that no matter how much water she drinks from this well, she'll always thirst for more. Then he offers water that could quench her thirst forever. He's not talking about the well water. No, what he's talking about is God's own life that comes through him to us to satisfy our deepest thirsts. This is why later on Jesus says, let anyone who's thirsty come to me and drink. This is cool, but it's also a strange image, drinking from a person. Totally. And it's connected to another strange image we find in the story of Jesus' death on the cross. A Roman soldier thrusts a spear in Jesus' side and there's blood, but also all this water flows out. Yes, it's an image showing how Jesus' death is a fountain of life. From him, God's own love that would die for his enemies flows down and out into the world. After Jesus was raised from the dead, we're told that he sends the spirit into his followers. Yes, to fill them up with God's own life. This is why the Apostle Paul said that when we join the current of God's Spirit, the fruit of Eden starts growing in us. 
love and joy, patience and kindness, gentleness and self-control. People like that can create beautiful things in the world that bring life to others. Yes, like little streams of God's life that can come together and point forward to the beautiful scene that we find on the last page of the Bible. There's a new river of life. Yes, it's flowing out from God and into a renewed creation, bringing life to all wherever it goes. Our first lesson is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Listen as the Spirit speaks to her church. Here is my servant whom I, am up, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands waiting for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See the former things that have come to pass and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. May God bless the reading and understanding of the Holy Word. Gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Listen now to the word for God's people. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he, John, consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the word for God's people. May God bless the reading and understanding of his holy word. Let's pray. Lord, may the words of my lips and the reflections of each one of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. About a hundred years ago, a baby born in England Lucille by name, was taken by her maternal grandmother to the local Wesleyan chapel to be baptized. Lucy's father, a sturdy Anglican, was skeptical about the whole proceeding since the Church of England does not regard the Methodist clergy as being of the apostolic succession. 
So he took Lucy to the Anglican church where she was baptized again. Now, Lucy's mother was a convert to the Salvation Army and didn't think much of either the Wesleyans or the Anglicans. So she took Lucy to the local citadel for presentation under the banner of blood and fire, this Salvationist counterpart to baptism. In time, the family emigrated to the Midwest of the U United States. The community they moved into neither had an Episcopal church nor an army citadel, so the family started to attend a Methodist church. And as a teenager, Lucy joined a class of those preparing to take vows for church membership. Now it happened that the pastor was one of those mavericks that looks upon practices in his own denomination with disapproval and regards the baptism of infants as a misguided, misguided tradition. So he therefore decreed that all in the class had to be truly baptized at the font on the day of their vows. Lucy's mother discovered what was afoot and said, absolutely not. Three times is enough for anybody. But Lucy was a good psychologist and knew that once her mother was seated in church, she couldn't or wouldn't make a scene. And when the rest of the group went up to the fount, so did Lucy. Now it came to pass some years later that Lucy fell in love and married a Southern Baptist, but not without first getting a pledge from him that she surely would not have to be baptized again. And he agreed that she was quite sufficiently initiated into the church and all was well. That is until they moved into a community where they attended a Baptist church that was in need of a pianist. Well, Lucy loved to play and it seemed to be a providential gift to the congregation, but ruled by the deacons solemnly and steadfastly, unimmersed hands may not play the Lord's song for us. And so for the fifth time, Lucy was initiated into Christ's church. Now, I don't know if Lucy deserves a place in the Guinness Book of World Records or not, but her story is a helpful one in dealing with some of the confusion that surrounds the practice of baptism. You see, as Christians, we believe you only need to be baptized once, whether immersed or sprinkled as an infant, a child, a teen or adult, once is enough. Baptism is a ritual that says, we hear God's invitation to come and partake in his living stream of water. And to do so in order to order our lives, to stay in that stream and then to show others the way so that life can be rich and abundant for all of God's creatures. In our tradition, we bring our infants to be baptized and we pledge to bring our children up in God's living stream of love, surrounded by other Christians, showing our children what a life filled with God's love looks like until they're old enough to confirm that choice for themselves. But through all this, remember that there is no magic in the water. God doesn't give or hold back his love and blessing based on whether or not we choose to be baptized or not to be baptized. Yet, still in all, rituals do hold power. We humans, we, we've always marked important turning points in our lives with rituals. Think about it. Baptisms aren't the only thing. Graduations, weddings, funerals, all of these things mark important uh, moments where before we're in one spiritual state of being and afterwards we move to a new spiritual state. Rituals don't move God. God is God. We don't have the power to restrain God. We can turn from his love, but we can't stop him from loving us. He loves us before he created us, and that love inspires his creation of us. 
He loves us before we're baptized and that love inspires his promise and grace and love throughout our entire existence in this world and in the world to come. Yet rituals help open the human heart and plant a new understanding deep within it. Lucy was loved by God just as much before each of her ritual baptisms as she was afterwards. Yet in each case, there was a renewed awareness and celebration of God's love by her grandmother, her father, her mother, her pastor, and even herself at her confirmation. The Bible Project folks illustrated this morning how we humans, we, we just yearn for a life of living in God's water of life, in his water of love and abundance. But our thirst for power and our thirst for more than our share of that eventually leads us out of the wilderness and into a wilderness of fear and violence. If we doubt that, unfortunately, we need only to look as far as the events that unfolded this past week. We've wandered far from the streams of God's word and God's love, forgetting that his greatest commandment to love him throughout uh, life by loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. We witnessed in horror, how breaking God's commandments to tell the truth can lead to unfounded fear and then anger and then violence and even death. A pattern displayed over and over again in our Bible and destined to be repeated whenever we wander far away from God's holy stream of life, love, and forgiveness. And yet, even these horrible events can be seen as birthing pains of God's renewed, new and better world breaking into our current chaos. And so we return this morning as Christians once again to remember our own baptism and to remember and renew our vows at a virtual River Jordan, remembering God's blessing and love and vowing to live in and spread that love to our enemies, as well as our loved ones. Today we remember we're born through the waters of a woman, and every day of our life is a result of that birth. But just so, we are also baptized of water and spirit, and every day of our life after that is living in the stream of God's water of life. We'll have some good days, and like last week, we'll have some very bad days. Some days we will see what happens when God's children turn their back on God's commandments to love one another and to usher in God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. But thank goodness, thank goodness, thank goodness, we can open our hearts by turning to our God to remember and renew our baptism. Baptism is a covenant, and while we might be unreliable about keeping our end, God is steadfast in his word and in his love. God means what he says when he tells us that we are all his beloved children, and we are all precious in his sight. So let us live and act in confidence that once again, God's water of life will renew and restore. And let us, through our love, extend those renewing streams to a hurting and waiting world. And all God's beloved children said, Amen. Take me to your river. I want to go. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about. The starry crown, good Lord, show me the way Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray As
Cause I went down in the river to pray Studying about that good old way And who shall wear the robe and crown Good Lord, show me the way Oh, mothers, Take let's me go down river. Let's go down, come on down Oh, mothers, Take let's me go down river. I wanna go As I went down in the river to pray Studying about that good old way And who shall wear a starry crown Good Lord, show me the way Let's go down, don't you wanna come down? Oh, sinners, let's go down Down in the river to pray Take me to your river Take me to your river Take me to your river I wanna go Down in the river to pray Sisters and brothers, through the sacrament of baptism, God's spirit has been poured upon the water. Water poured over and immersing us. Water that flows freely for all who will receive it. Water from the stream of God's saving power and justice. Water that brings hope to all who thirst for righteousness. Water that refreshes life nurtures growth and offers new birth. Today, we come to the waters to renew our commitments in one another's presence to Christ who has raised us, the spirit that has birthed us and the creator who is making all things new. And so I ask you, will you turn away from the pull of fear and selfishness? Let's see the slide. And so I ask you, will you turn away from the pull of fear and selfishness? We renounce our spiritual impulses toward wickedness, reject the evil lures of this world, and repent of our willingness to participate in harmfulness. And I ask you now, will you let the spirit use you as prophets to a hurting world? We accept the freedom and power God gives us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. Will you proclaim the good news and live as disciples of Jesus Christ, his body on earth? We confess Jesus Christ as our Savior, put our whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as our Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Will you be living witnesses to the gospel, <clears throat> individually and together, wherever you are and in all that you do? We will remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world. Will you receive and profess the Christian faith is contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. We affirm and teach the faith of the whole church as we put our trust in God, the creator, in Jesus Christ, our redeemer, and in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Okay. I ask you now to place your hands above your water. And let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, the life you birthed in us by the baptism in Jesus Christ is eternal. Your justice never fails. Your mercy is everlasting. Your healing river flows and your spirit blows where you will. You can, we cannot stop you, God, but sometimes we try. We try to block the flow. We direct the winds of the spirit or 
We try to walk so far away from the life-giving stream that you do not, we do not hear its sound and we forget its power. We parch ourselves. We are dry and thirsty bones. Oh God, come and refresh us. Amen. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon these waters. Come upon these waters. Let these waters be to us drops of your mercy. Let these waters remind us of your righteousness and justice. Let these waters renew in us the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Let these waters make us long for your coming reign. <clears throat> Most holy God, creator, redeemer, sustainer. All glory is yours now and forever. Amen. Okay. And let us touch the water as a signal of our renewing of our own baptism. Remember that you are baptized and rejoice. You are God's beloved child with whom he is well pleased. Amen. Just as the waters of the earth <clears throat> are abundant and full of life, so are the blessings God pours upon us daily. Let us now joyfully offer our tithes, pledges, and offerings with the hope that they may enable others to feel immersed in God's love.
Well, our worship wouldn't be complete without lifting up our prayers to God. So let us take a moment to pause in prayer. Holy God, we thank you for the love and grace, the power and glory, the humility and compassion you have shown through your child, Jesus. Today, we remember that our Lord was baptized by John in the Jordan River so long ago, and we are grateful also that we have been able to share in that baptism. You called Jesus by name and you spoke of your love for him and you poured your spirit upon him and said you were pleased. Give us eyes to see and a heart to understand, Lord, the gift of baptism as a sign of your heart toward Jesus being extended through our lives as well. Help us to hear your voice today and help each of us to hear your call. Help us to know that we're beloved children as well. But today we see so much strife in our nation, Lord. We see so many in fear. We see so many who have wandered away from your streams of living water and are acting out of fear and anger and lifting up violence as the way. Today, Lord, we lift up our nation to your loving streams. Lord, in your mercy, heal us, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And today we lift up those who are closest to our hearts. The family of Maxine Cowper, the family of Lucille Mullet, the family of Jan Thompson, Doris Grimm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bud and Anita, Jim Cotton, John and Miriam Daniels, Terry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Chris. Carly, Phil, Kennard, and Jean. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lisa and Jerry, Robin, the family of Andy Pettit, Lauren. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Sujanta, Judith, and Tim Cotton in the leadership and ordination. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, pour your spirit afresh upon us and fill us with power. Help us to go from this place with a mission, with joy in our hearts and your word on our lips. May the same spirit that filled Jesus with power to proclaim repentance in the coming kingdom that same spirit that empowered Jesus to heal the sick and set free the captives, may that same spirit overwhelm and, and empower us to do even greater works and to see your kingdom established right here in our nation. We pray that you will renew us and bring us back to a brother and sisterhood of children that love and respect one another and love and respect your rule of law. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forget forever, as we pray with confidence of the children of God, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we've been reminded of the promise of our baptism that we are beloved and we belong to God. May that knowledge sustain us as we share the love of God with the world. Let us go with God to be the people of God, to be a blessing 
as we ourselves have been blessed. Amen.